The theme of the year 2023 is redigging and repossessing the wells of our fathers. Redigging and repossessing the wells of our fathers. And the guiding scripture or chapter is basically Genesis chapter 26, around verse 18 and thereabout. And since the beginning of this year, and when the theme was unveiled, we have had so many servants of God come and speak to us about redigging and repossessing the wells of our fathers. And there are many of them. And my confidence is that by the help of God, in this year 2023, we'll be able to redig those wells. But as I was seeking of God, then what do I share with the people of God this morning? God spoke and put in my heart on the topic, who will, who will, amen, who will, who will redig and who will repossess the wells of our fathers. And from what has been shared since the beginning of this year, the character in the Bible who embodies the redigging of the wells of our fathers is Isaac. So from the life of Isaac, there are so many things that we can be able to learn from him so that we can be able to position ourselves to be able to redig and repossess the wells of our fathers in the year 2023. So as a way of introduction, I want to introduce you Isaac. I want to introduce you Isaac. And Isaac comes from the lineage of Abraham. He comes from the lineage of Abraham. In Genesis chapter 17, verse 4, is when God promised Abraham that he'll be a father of many nations. He'll be a father of many nations. In chapter 17 of Genesis, verse 21, God confirms the covenant with Abraham that he'll give him a son by the name of Isaac. And later on, in chapter 21, verse 3, Isaac was born. Isaac was born. And we know the story of Abraham and Sarah. They waited for so long to conceive and bring forth Isaac. And in the process of waiting on the promise of God, Sarah spoke to Abraham that he may lay with Hagar and a son, Ishmael, was born. And as we will find out later on, Ishmael is not the one who was to redig the wells of the fathers of his father Abraham, but Isaac was to redig the well of Abraham or the wells of Abraham. And Abraham had wives and concubines. Amen? Abraham had wives and concubines. He had Keturah. He had Keturah. And with Keturah, he had many sons. Six sons. But not none of these sons were mandated to redig the well of Abraham. Abraham had a concubine in Hagar. And I said earlier on, 
the son born of that relationship with Hagar, Ishmael was not the one to redig the wells of Abraham. But with Sarah, he bore a son by the name of Isaac. And Isaac was mandated to redig the wells of Abraham. So, through the life of Isaac, there came rest, there came satisfaction, there came fulfillment from the redigging of the wells. I come from Moraga, Moranga, and I remember a couple of years ago, we used to go fetch water from a distance. And my mom made the decision to dig a well. And the well was dug within our compound. And from the digging of that well, it brought us rest. It brought us rest because we didn't have to go very far and fetch water. But from the compound, it brought rest. It brought satisfaction. Not just to us as a family, but also from the neighbors. But also from the neighbors. Neighbors could come to our compound and fetch water. And as a result, they are also brought rest to them because they didn't have to go far off and fetch and fetch and fetch water. So when Isaac was born, when Isaac was born, it got to a point and God commanded Abraham to make a sacrifice. To make a sacrifice. To make a sacrifice. And he was to sacrifice his son, Isaac. And as Abraham went to sacrifice Isaac, as we find in the book of Genesis, chapter 22, verse 7 to 9, The Bible says, and Isaac said to Abraham, my father, and he said, here I am, my son. Isaac said, look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself a lamb for the burnt offering. So the two walked on together. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood and bowed Isaac, his son, and placed him on the altar on top of the wood. Every time that we read this piece of scripture, we always recognize Abraham, because of that act of faith, going to sacrifice his own son. Being commanded of God to go and make a sacrifice. Yet, there was no lamb to sacrifice. But Isaac was to be sacrificed. But very few of us think of what was going through the mind of Isaac. What was going through the mind of Isaac as he was bowed and he was placed on the altar and the father was about to sacrifice him. This story brings to us one of the requirements for us to be able to be positioned to redig the wells of our fathers. And that is we must be faithful even to the point of death. We must be faithful even to the point of death. We must be faithful even to the point of death. And for us to be faithful 
even up to the point of death, we must be able to have faith greater than our fears. Faith greater than our fears. We must be courageous. We must be courageous. Isaac must have believed in his father, Abraham. The Bible does not provide much context into what happened. The Bible does not say what was going on through his mind. The Bible does not say whether there was a struggle or not. But I would imagine he was calm because he believed in what his father said that God will provide the lamb. Amen? Amen? We must be faithful. We must be faithful. We must be faithful as Christians. We must be faithful all the way to the end. Many a times we wait on God and God has spoken to you. God has spoken to, uh, to me. But we get to a point and we give up. And we give in to what the devil bring our way. But we must remain faithful to death. We must remain faithful to death. And this morning, I don't know who is waiting for what on God. And you're about to give up. And you're about to give up. You cannot give up. You cannot give up. You must have faith in God. Isaac had faith that God will provide. And by that, then he was calm and he was able to wait on God as God provided a sacrificial ram to his father, Abraham. And for us as Christians, as the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 12 verse 1, that I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. God expects us, God expects you, God expects me to surrender our life to him without holding anything back, without holding anything back. We must present our lives as a living sacrifice to him. A sacrifice that is holy and acceptable. And it's only through living our lives for God that we will surely find fulfillment in this life. In this life. We must wait on God. If God said he would do it, he will surely do it. He will surely do it. He will surely do it. You can't give up. You can't give up. Because he who promised, he is faithful. He is faithful. He is faithful. He is a God of integrity. What he said he would do, he will surely do. He will surely do. And this morning, even as you trust to redig that particular well, you can't afford to give up. You must have faith in God. Isaac had faith in God. Isaac had faith in God, even from a very early life. The second point is that, like Isaac, sometimes we must choose peace of a victory. We must choose peace of a victory. The Bible in the book of Genesis chapter 26 verse 22a after redigging the wells of his father Abraham and after he dug other wells in the valley and there was quarrel and there was strife. 
The Bible records on this scripture that he moved on from there and dug another well. So for us to be able to redig some of these wells, we have to get to a point and choose peace. And choose peace. For so long, we have learned to be violent. And we say that the violent shall take it by force. But we don't have to win every battle. We don't have to win every argument. We don't always have to be right. We don't always have to be right. We don't have to always pick every battle. Some of us are weighing down. Some of us are so drained because we pick up every battle that come our way. We must be a people who are ready to make peace. To make peace. To make peace. We don't always have to win. It doesn't always have to be our way. It doesn't always have to be our way. If you are to redig the wells of our fathers, then we must choose at times the way of peace of a victory. We can see that Isaac preferred peace rather than being right. He preferred peace rather than being right. Yes, there are times when we should fight for our right. But Isaac recognized that vengeance belongs to God. We must get to that point and recognize that vengeance belongs to the Lord. And you surely repay. You surely repay even as you make peace. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 12 verse 19. Do not take revenge my dear friends but have room for God's wrath. For it is written it is mine to avenge I will repay says the Lord. Isaac surrendered his problems to God and let him to handle it. I don't know what about you, but of me, I know it would be better if God handles some of those battles for me. Because if I handle it my way, then I'm likely to fail. And this morning, God is speaking to us that we need to choose the way of peace over victory at times, even as we listen to God. And I don't know who you've been fighting with of late. It could be your spouse. It could be your colleague. It could be your neighbor. It could be that driver on the road. But you must choose the way of peace. The way of peace. The way of peace. May God guide us in knowing where we need to have peace. To make peace with our neighbors, with our colleagues, with our friends, with our family members. The other attribute of Isaac is that Isaac had a willing submission and obedience to God. Isaac had a willing submission and obedience to God. In Genesis chapter 26, verse 2 to 6. Genesis chapter 26, verse 2 to 6. The Bible says... Then the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land of which I shall tell you. 
dwell in this land, I will be with you and I bless you. For to you and your descendants, I give all this land. And I will perform the oath which I sow to Abraham, your father. And I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give to your descendants all these lads and your seed. All the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge. My commandments, my statutes, and my laws. So Isaac dwelt in Gerar. Amen? We have led of how Isaac dug and he dug so many wells. How he was blessed. He became prosperous and more prosperous. But there was a time that he had to submit his will to God and obey him fully. And obey him fully. And obey him fully. Because of Isaac's submission, God reaffirmed his covenant. There is a covenant that God had given to Abraham. But because of his obedience, as we have just said, he reaffirmed that covenant. There are covenants our fathers received. There are covenants our fathers received. And it's by Submission to God and obedience to him that we have come this far. And for us to be entitled, for us to be partakers to those covenants, we must submit our will to God and obey. And obey. And obey. Which area of your life have you not been in obedience to God? Which area of your life have you not been obedient to God? Without obedience to God, you may recite all these promises that we have in the word of God, but they will be void and null. They will have no effect in your life. It will take your obedience and your submission of your will to God. The other attribute of Isaac that we see is that, uh, and we must learn from what he did well and what he didn't do well. We must be impartial. We must be impartial and never pray favorites. We must be impartial and never pray favorites. In Genesis chapter 25 verse 28, we see the game of favorism played by Isaac and Rebecca. And soon, it became ugly. Two brothers who were supposed to be close, Esau and Jacob, grew to become rivals. The rivalry between the two led to Rebekah and Jacob deceiving Isaac. They tricked Isaac to give the blessing upon Jacob instead of Esau. As parents, And as Christians, we must not pray favorites. We must not pray favorites. And we know from the scriptures that God shows no favorism. Our God shows no favorism. In Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 17, the Bible says, For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God. Mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality and accepts no bribes. That's our God. As Christians, we must show no favorism. 
Acts chapter 10, verse 34, the Bible says, Then Peter began to speak. And now realize how true it is that God does not show favorism. Our God shows no favorism. There are scriptures upon scriptures that we see the nature of God as a God who shows no favorism. The life of Isaac shows us the negative effects of showing partiality or favorism. As Christians, we need to remember that Jesus Christ died for all of us. Jesus Christ died for all of us. Jesus Christ died for all of us. He did not just die for a specific group of people. He did not just die for Christians, but he died for the whole world. As we read in the book of John chapter 3 verse 16. Therefore, it is imperative for us Christians not to be selective. We should not be selective as Christians to whom we show goodness. We should not be selective as Christians to whom we show goodness. Be it in our families, be it in our neighborhood, be it in our businesses, be it in church, be it in that network that God has given you the responsibility. You should not be selective to who you show goodness. Goodness is to be shown to all. If Christ died to us all and we believe the same. Galatians chapter 6 verse 10 says therefore as we have opportunity let us do good to all. Let us do good to all. Especially to those who are of the household of faith. There are priorities that we must always take into consideration but God will expect you to do good to all as the opportunity presents itself. If you are to redig some of these wells, we must not show any favorism. In our places of work, wherever God has put us, wherever God has put us, because Christ died for us all. Christ died for us all. Christ died for us all. If from within us, there are to be wells that will flow and will refresh many. We must not show favorism to anyone. We must not be selective. In demonstrating the goodness of God. The other attribute I would want to share with us. From the life of Isaac. Is that his life was governed, was governed by the covenants of God. His life was governed by the covenant of God. The Bible in the book of Genesis chapter 17 verse 19 says. And God said. Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed. And thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. And with his seed after him. The covenant of God will follow you wherever you go. The covenant of God will follow you wherever you go. And when we talk about the covenant of God, there are covenants of works. There are covenants of works. Where God promises to save and bless men on condition of perfect obedience to him. But also, there are covenants of grace. There are covenants of grace where God promises to save men 
on condition of their believing in Christ and receiving him as their master, Lord, and Savior. Our lives must be governed by these covenants. But these covenants, we also have a part to pray in them so that we can be able to engage and we can be able to move into that space of being able to redeem our wells. The Bible in the book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 25 says, For this reason, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant. Christ is the mediator of a new covenant. That those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. Now that he has died as a ransom. To set them free from the sins committed under the first covenant. Under the first covenant. Christ is a mediator of a new covenant. Christ is a mediator of a new covenant. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 20 to 21, the Bible says, Now, may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom the glory forever and ever Amen. We must give ourselves and be yielded to the covenants of God. To the covenants of God. This morning, do you know those covenants? Do you know those covenants? Do you know what is required of you that you may be a partaker of these blessings? There is power in making declarations and decrees. But God is not mocked. God is not mocked. There is a part that you need to pray in these covenants. Even in you being able to redig the wells in this year 2023. In the year 2023. There is a part that you need to pray. There is a lot of power in making prayers and praying to God. And I'm a very firm believer of that. But no matter how you pray, there's some blessings that do not follow you because there is a part that you need to do. We must be open to the covenants of God. We must be open to the covenants of God. We must be aware of them. And we must know the part that is required of us so that you can be able to be partakers of the blessings of God. And this morning... There are many wells that we can dig. There are many wells that we can dig. But there is a particular well in the book of John chapter 7 verse 38. The Bible says, He who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. From his innermost being will flow Rivers of living water. Brethren, we are not going back to the days of Isaac to redeem physical wells. We are not going back to those days to redeem physical wells. But in us, there is a well. In us, there is a well. In us, there is a well. And the Bible says that from our innermost being will flow rivers of living water. In you, there can flow rivers of living water. 
In this sanctuary, there can flow rivers of living water. In this sanctuary, there can flow rivers of living waters. Right here in this altar, there is a well. There is a well. There is a well. And this well flows with the rivers of living water. The Bible in the book of Zechariah, chapter 14, verse 8 to 9 says, And in that day, living waters will flow out of Jerusalem. Half of them toward the eastern sea, and the other half toward the western sea. It will be in summer as well in winter. It will be in summer as well in winter. From this altar, there is a well. From this altar, there is a well. Whether in winter or whether in summer. Whether in winter or whether in summer. And from this well, there shall flow rivers of living water. There shall flow rivers of living water. There shall flow rivers of living water. There is a well on this altar. There is a well on this altar. And some of us are going through famine. Some of us are going through famine. As Isaac, as Isaac, there came another famine. But on this altar, there is a well. There is a well that flows with the living water. There is a well that flows with the living water. And those who are going through every famine can come to this altar. And the will of God will satisfy you. And the will of God will satisfy you. It doesn't matter whether it is winter. It doesn't matter whether it is summer. But from here, from this water, there is a well. There is a well. Isaac's wife, Rebecca, was barren. And God came through for her. On this altar, there is a well. On this altar, there is a well. And the barren shall conceive. The barren shall conceive. The barren shall conceive. The barren shall conceive. The barren shall, shall conceive. Because from this altar, there is a well. From this altar, there is a well. Hey. From this altar, there is a well. From this altar, there is a well. I don't know what famine that you're going through. I don't know what barrenness that you have in your life. But from this altar, there is a well. There is a well. There is a well. There is a well from this altar. And it flows with the living waters. It flows with the living waters. Then he showed me a river of water of life. Clear as crystal. Coming from the throne of God. And of the Lamb. In the middle of its streets. On either side of the river was the tree of life. Bearing twelve kinds of fruit. Yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree. We are for the healing of the nations. Was for the healing of nations. Revelation 22, 1 to 2. And that is the well which is here. That's the well which is here. There is a well. There is a well that bear many kinds of fruits. There is a well that bear many kinds of fruits. There is a tree of life. And it bears every fruit. From this well, at the living waters flow, there is healing for businesses. There is healing for marriages. There is healing for marriages. There is healing 
for marriages. Oh, there is healing for marriages. I would request us to be upstanding. I would request us to be upstanding. I would request us to be upstanding. And on this altar, there is a well. On this altar, there is a well. There is a well. And our fathers have dug this well. This well has been removed of every dirt. And this morning from this well, there are living waters flowing from it. There are living waters flowing from it. There are living waters flowing from it. And you are here in this congregation this morning. You are here this morning in this very congregation. I don't know what famine that you could be in. I don't know what famine you could be in this morning. I don't know what barrenness you could be having this morning. But on this altar, there is a well. There is a well. There is a well. And from this well, rivers of living waters are flowing. And I request the ministry team to come in front. I request the ministry team to come in front. I request the ministry come in front. I want to request us. I want to request us. Don't be ashamed of anyone. Don't be ashamed of anything. But if you have famine in your life, whatever kind of famine, if you have barrenness in your life, Whatever barrenness it is, I want to request you to run here in front. I want to request you to run here in front in the mighty name of Jesus. And don't just start there and look at me. Don't just start there and look at me. Lift your voice to God. Lift your voice to God. Because this very morning, there is rivers of living water. There is rivers of living waters. There is rivers of living waters from the well on this altar in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Riandere Karama, Sindiri Yadiraba. Mandoro Korobos, Sindiri Daramanta, Riandere Azi. Hey, Maria Andereaki, Tarama, Shandaraba by Andere. He Mandereati, Dabati, Landeke, Torosi, Andere Baba Andere. Don't miss this river at its flows. Don't miss it. Oh, Mashanda Rakeda. Materebos and the Riandere. Mare Mayandarake. Torozi Narama. Manturobo sending Narakayandaraba. Hendariande Satiraba. Mantiramo Kuyondi. Maroba Karamanta Rabba by Andere. Oh, Shariandere Basse Kerianere, Mesara Mazarandere Karabati, Lamonda Rababa, Oh, Bati Ramando Robozi, Neketi Rarandi, Hey, Marianda Rakayanda Rabazi Andere, Marepa Rayanda Rabate, Lemande, Los Satira, Yuhamanda Rakari. This Satarianda Rababaya Karayandere, the Resa Yandi, Marinda Rakayando Robobo Sender Yandere, Mataria Mantara, Oh Rabakarabayanderebo Sender Yandaraba, He Masanti, Oh Rayandere Kendorobo Sender Yandere, Matari. Santa Rabas Yandere, O Radakara Mamas in the Yandere, Matera Loma Sate Yandere, Le Rabas Andere, O Reataraba, let your living waters flow, let your living waters flow this morning, let your living waters flow this morning, Hey, Makera Basinda Rababayari, Marinda Rakaraba, Matera. Oh, let your living waters flow. In Masenda Rababara Kayander Yadiraba, Masenderiata, Robacarabas Yandere, In Mandirabaki, Telamazinda Raba, 
Machira Mandere Kendorobo Sender Yandere Hematalande Riakara Basender Yande Rimama Marandia Sadnereva Bayandere He Rakayanda Rabasia There is a well on this altar there is a well. Hey, Mashanda Rabasi and And this morning, the living waters are flowing. The living waters are flowing this morning. Mata la masa. Ho, Rayandi. Karima Sindiriaba. Mariba Karamamayanda Rabasia. Deresan Diriboka. Mandarabada Ramandia Saride. Metirebo Sindarakayan Deraba. Oh, Mandina Nana Rama Mamara Kayari. Inresi. Ho, Riaba. Lema Santia. Rekara. Oh, Tayande, let your living waters flow. Oh, Shandara Babayandere, Shandara Babayantia, hey, Rekendorobosia, let barrenness be broken this morning. Let barrenness be broken this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Let barrenness be broken. Oh, Riatiramanzi, Mandoroko Yodi, Tiramazina Ramaze, Marita Rababayander Yakayande, Remateri Andere, Shandarabosi, and Terebosi, and Dikari, Oh, Rianiramazi, Hey, Batiramosi Andere, let there be Lamanda Raketeri Ade, Oh, Shandaraka, Riatibasi, and Rababayande Andere. Rima tirimozi ndara rakayande riadiraba henda la basha ndara raba bayandere o sandela kazi he manira ndesi atarandi mendiritsa sindireba zalalansi ndrema marita o lord o lord den talasia you sent alande lord you said it samanta la bayandere Lord Makarabasia, let your living waters flow this morning. Let your living waters flow this morning. Let your living waters oh, break every barrenness in the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be conception. Let there be conception in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be conception. Conception this morning. Let there be conception in the Ratia, Mazeka, Ripayazi, Hor Yandara Babayaka Yandarabe, Meterendia, Tirabazi, Shandarazi, Mesheke Torobos in the Riandere, Matila Masender Riandere, O Rabande, Samandaraba, Decate, Samani Bin Karati and Rede. Someone being saying, oh, no matter who I try, it doesn't come through. No matter what I do, there is nothing to show for it. This morning, receive a fresh idea. Receive a fresh idea from the throne of God, where month on month there are fruits and reality. Mazekarabosi and Rere, oh, in the name of Jesus, Marekara Mashender Yadreba, Masetarande, Sandeka, Her Yatira Bossi and Rere, Himazira Kayande, Hendarasia, Sandaraba, someone been saying, or Amantia, that oh, I have come to an ede, 
there. There is no way back to this. There is no way. Oh, it may not a missionary. It can never come back to life. But this morning, from the well flowing from this altar, receive life this morning. Receive life this morning. Receive life this morning. Receive life this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Shandarabozi Niriande Batera Sindindarabo in the Mozala Masindaraba. Oh, Tirime Memora Kender Yandarabas Yandereata. Hey, Shandarababa Yakender Yatelebo in the Rebos and the Yandere Masandarabora. Oh, Shandarakayander Yati Mesendarabos Yandere Yandere. Oh, Lord, Nandarakayander. Lea Masander Yandere, Le Banzi, Shakarabayanzi, Masseter Yante, Ribasander Yata, Shandala Kayazi, Messender Yandara Babasa, O Shariandere, O bless Yandara Bayandere, a fresh Shandara Bayande, in the mighty name of Jesus, Sunday, O Rabaka, E Santer Yandere Yandere. We honor you, Jehovah Father. We magnify your name and we adore you this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. And Zukomari Andereria, let the living waters flow. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every dead situation. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every form of famine. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be life everlasting, Father. Every form of barrenness. Let there be fruitfulness. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We honor you. You're good and you're faithful. We bless you, Lord, and we give you glory.